So I want to start with our feet. And yes, Pam, we started with our feet this morning. I guess I should back it up, maybe, right? All right. So I'm going to sit sideways for a second. So you happen to see the edge of the chair. I don't want to be rounded, right? You can see just the tip of the chair. I want to be up and down so you can see the whole edge of the chair. So good posture, in other words. Abs are tucked in, legs are out. So, and again, I like wearing pants that you can see stripes and all that kind of stuff because you can see the different angles of my legs then. So I'm sitting up nice and tall, abs are in, everything's engaged in our thighs, right? We're gonna just pick up your left heel. Left heel, drop, left heel, drop. Left heel, drop, and left heel, drop. Leave it up this time, hold. I'm taking the front part of my foot and ankle and pressing forward, right? Put it down, we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna go four, drop, three, drop, two, pull the next, pull, push. So you should feel your calf muscle, yeah. Set it down, do it again. And up, down, push, and push, push, hold. And I'm still pushing. Put it down one more set. Push, drop, push, drop, push, drop, push, hold, and rest. I'm gonna switch sides. So what happens when you have slate pants on, you can just fly around. So again, everything up nice and tall. Abs are in, ready? And up, down, up, down, up, up and hold. And again, push forward. Again, up, down, up, down, up, down, up and hold, and again, push. I mean, actually, it feels like I'm pushing my heel forward. Put it down, let's go again, and up and down, push. And push, push, hold. Put it down, let's do one more set. Push, and push, and push, push, hold, and rest. Back to the front. So, we're going to push the toes into the floor. And now we're going to pull your toenails clear to your knees. I know that just didn't sound right. Push down, pull up, push down, pull up. So you're moving, right, with purpose. I'm not just going, oh, no, 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 right? I'm pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling for four, a three, a two. Relax your minute, for a minute. So now, the first one, we're warming up the back side and stretching the front. This time we were working the front, stretching the back. Smart, right? Who knew? We're gonna leave our feet flat on the floor. In your shoes, can you pull your toes to the top of your shoes without taking your feet off the floor? Now push your toes into the bottom of your shoe, right? Pull them up, push them down, pull them up, and I know you can't really see. Well, I guess you can see my, my shoes move a little bit. That's how much I'm pulling and pushing my toes. And pull up, push down, pull up, push down, go four, a three, a two, relax. You should feel the forefoot, right? So what I consider the forefoot is these are toes, this is ankle, and the, this is a forefoot, right? So where your ball of your foot is and the top of your foot. We're not quite done. I want to go to the outside edge, both feet, outside edge. Very attractive, right? And go to your toes, shoop. Go to the inside edge, go to your heels. Outside toes, inside heels. Outside toes, inside heels. Outside toes, inside hold. Relax your feet. So now you feel like, oh, yeah, 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 I got some lubrication going on. Knees. Yeah, we're doing a little different today. I actually want you to take your hands, hold on to the side of your knees. Now you don't have to slap yourself like I just did, but you get the concept that I am keeping my knee in alignment with my hand. And I'm just going to heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. So officially, this is the only way our knee moves. It doesn't rotate our knee doesn't rotate in the socket. It's a hinge 
joint, right? So it only goes forward and back, right? Forward and back, forward and back. One more. We're gonna switch legs. So if you have knee problems, this activity is good for you, right? Forward and back. And I'm just keeping that knee in alignment because we're teaching it to say, this is your job. This is all I want you to do is forward and back and forward and back at the knee joint. Yes. At four, at three, at two, relax, right? By the way, your quad should be like starting to fire up just from holding the leg up. So now we've got your toes, your feet, your ankles, your shins, your calves, your knees, and now we're working up into your quads from doing the extensions. We're not quite done with the knees so I'm gonna sit sideways. So you can see my legs are, my upper thighs and my thighs uh, parallel to the floor. So we did that tracking thing where we're just keeping the foot on the floor. Now, you don't have to hold on to your knee because you know what it's supposed to do, right? So if I take my foot out and take my leg, or leg down, foot out, foot down. Now you feel your quad and now we're getting more range of motion, right? So you feel your quad or contract. I'm having trouble with words today. And forward and down and push to the bottom of your heel. Push the one more. Totally rest, right? So you can feel that quad. Everything's up. Ready? Here we go. And push, release. Push to the bottom of your heel. Like push, release. Push, release. Fire up that leg. And you notice my toe is at 12 o'clock. It's not turned out to 11 o'clock. It's straight up and down. And it doesn't drop my leg. My leg stays in a parallel position from the floor. Let's do three more, because why? It's an odd number. Go one more and relax. So again, now your quads are back. So again, I was talking about the knee. Its job is to go forward and back. It is not to twist around or anything crazy because why that hurts, right? And then we're injured. But our hip joint is a little different. It's a ball socket, right? And it can do all kinds of wonderful things. Sometimes it doesn't do wonderful things and it hurts because we get arthritis in it, right? So we have to clean that joint out a little bit, I would call it, by moving it. I know. We're going to do this in a seated position for a moment. So let me get this side. So this is my left hip. And I'm really trying to, I'm holding on to the chair so I don't fall out. I'm actually kind of lifting my hip out of the chair so I can get range of motion by wagging that toe right and left like the windshield wiper. So in the ball socket, is doing this, right? So you know there's a um, rotator cuff in your shoulder, right? That allows us to do this action, right? We have muscles, we call them hip flexors, basically, that do the same thing. Now they have other names, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Right, let's switch, shoot. But down the road, we're going to start talking more about them. And again, just wag that toe back and forth. Because I think it's important when I say, do you feel X, Y, or Z, right? You go, I know where that's at and I know what it's used for. Four, three, two, because education and empowerment go hand in hand. So now we've told the joint that it is okay to rotate without body weight. Remember what I said. It's okay to rotate without body weight. So now we're gonna add forward and back, or at least I should say forward for a moment. So if we do knee lifts, right? Knee lift up, knee lift up, knee lift up, knee lift up. So now the front, our hip flexors, quads and abs, have to fire up to bring the knee up. And because our knee is bent, we don't have a lot of stretch, right? I'm, I'm, I'm 
hoping that you don't have a lot of stretch. Right? So if we extend out a kick, our leg extension, push up, push up. Now I'm not down here anymore. I'm up, above parallel, above parallel. So now we're getting some work going, right? And we're doing some active stretching in the back. And four, three, two, last one, whoop, right? So you feel your quads, they're nice and toasty, and you have a nice stretch on the back of the legs. And again, up in front of the chair. So now your hips, they're getting better, right? So now we're going to add a little more pelvis involved, loosening it up. And again, other things are helping, don't get me wrong. It's not just your pelvic, pelvic girdle, right? So, first position arms, hide the thumbs, right? Soft hands, elbows are lifted. So we're gonna pick up your right hip, your left hip, your right hip, your left. Pick it up, pick it up. And right and left, right and left. Abs are in, right, left, right and left, right and left, right. Let's do four more. Four, three, two, last one. Rest for a sec, drop the arms. We're gonna walk the hips, or the booty, to the back of the chair. So it's gonna take us right, left, right, left, and we'll go forward. Right, left, right, left. So now we're adding some movement. Excuse me. First position, arms ready. Here we go. Right back, left back, right back, right forward. And left. Now take it back and right. A left, a right, now go forward. Go right, go left, ready, go back. Go right, go left. Go right, go forward. Go right, go left. And relax those arms down. So we're just adding movement and we're stretching and now things are like, hey, we're moving better. Yes, yes we are. So now we're gonna add the gait. I needed to loosen things up before we started here, right? Chest is lifted. Now when we step to the side, our toe stays in alignment with our knee. And our foot stays under our knee. So there's not a time that it looks like this. That just looks awkward, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm getting a great stretch up in my hip, but we're not there yet. So when we open the gate, that gate doesn't break. It stays straight up. Notice my toes straight from my knee, and then it comes right back in, other side. Out, in, out, in. Everything's up and lifted. My shoulder blades are slightly pinched together. It makes my chest lift without thinking so much. And it's to the side, and to the side. And again, we're moving with purpose, going, it's okay, it's okay. And left, and four, front, three, front, two, front, last one, and rest. So everything pretty much from, I'll say your waistline down, should be feeling good. Nice and tall. Pull the tray of cookies. Yes, I love cookies, right? Chest up, abs in, do your kegel. Shoulder blades are slightly pinched together. So we're gonna keep the cookies in front of us. Now you know if you do this, those cookies are gonna shift off the pan, right, the tray. So we have to be careful and turn. And we're gonna turn the other way. And turn to the right. And turn to the left. And right left. And if you go kuchung, those cookies are going to go flying on the floor. And that would be cookie abuse. Right? Left. Pull your navel in. And right. Left. Right. Left. And right. And left. Now you can feel your inner thighs being active. Your abs are working. Go four and three and two. <sighs> Rest for a sec. And we're going to put the cookies, they're not cooked yet, so we have to put the cookies up into a top loading oven. I know, I'm, I'm making things up now. But they really do have ovens that you have to do this to. They're not that high, they're more this high, but 
you, you get the gist, right? So we're going to put the cookies in the top tray, right? Put them up. Put them up. Do you see how I'm... My brakes are on, so I'm not going to fall out of the chair. My thumbs are facing the ceiling, and I'm putting the tray up. Put it up. Bring it back. Put it up. Bring it back. Everything is nice and lifted. Long neck. So when I lean forward, my feet don't allow me to go too far, right? They're nice and out in front. Let's do four and back. Three and back. Two more. Now last one. And relax. So now the shoulders are starting to wake up. Chest and back. We're going to do a little more shoulder stuff though. So fingertips are reaching for the floor. Chest is lifted. Inner thighs are active. Abs, kegel. <sighs> Smile is pretty. So if my palms are facing my legs right now, I want to take it to the palm, palms to the front, palms to the chair, palms front, chair, front, chair, front, chair. And the whole time, I'm squeezing my armpits and I'm reaching for the floor. And we're going to take the palms to the back. Ready? Palms to the back, to the chair, back, chair, back, chair. Are your abs pulled in? Are you doing your kegels, right? Now we're going to do full rotation. Ready? To the front, to the back, to the front, to the back, to the front, to the back. And just like your hip joints, that's your shoulders, right? And you can totally rotate. Now we're going to take your arms to five and seven and keep doing the same concept. And again, your shoulder blades are slightly pinched together. You're sitting up tall, out of tone, inner thighs are squeezing, doing your kegel. Whew. All this stuff to remember. Can you go to like three and nine or just slightly below it, right? And now I can get to the ceiling, to the ceiling, to the ceiling, to the ceiling, to the best you can. Woo, those shoulders are running up. And four, three, two. Whew. So we've been warming up for 18 minutes, 19 minutes, whatever. And it feels kind of like work. I don't know how that happened. All right. So again, everybody's lined up, nice and tall, feet are forward, heels are underneath your knees, all that good stuff. Put your hands, right? Down on your knees, chest is lifted, shoulder blades slightly squeezed. I will say that a jillion times for my new folks coming on. So we're going to take your right hand across the body and bring it down left hand. Same thing. Cross, down, cross, down, cross, down, cross, and down. Cross. So what do you feel? You can feel the back of your shoulder blades stretching, right? More on the midline section, on the inner side of it, toward your spine. Abs are in, cross, and cross, and cross. So instead of crossing over, we're going to take both hands up and hit fingertips, right? And tips of your fingers. That's it. Keep your chest lifted. Hold up. Now we're going to take them up, but we're going to go wide. So we're going to go wide, fingertips, wide, fingertips. Why is this important to actually touch your fingers? Well, you know, if you get pulled over in a sobriety checkpoint, I need you to be able to touch your nose and your fingers and all that kind of stuff. I'm joking. And lift and lower and lift and lower. Go four and three, two, bring it down. Roll the shoulders. Ha! Huh. I have a big old diesel truck like skimming the back end of my car. I can see it. It makes me a little nervous. So everything is warmed up with the exception of your neck right now. So if I think about my ears, first of all, long neck. You already know all this. Everything's tucked in, pushed up, all that good stuff, right? Hands on your thighs. So if we think about our ears being in alignment with our shoulders and spine, we are sitting up super tall. And I want to keep that super tall feel by pulling through the, my ponytail, right, the crown of my head. 
Take, oh, take your right ear over to your right shoulder. Bring it up. Left, drop, up. And I like kind of going slow with this because sometimes if we go fast, the room gets us spinning. And I know you're sitting down, but it is no fun being dizzy. And when I'm doing this, I really think more up than pushing down. And I know that seems kind of weird, but it's a true statement. So I think push up, push up, push up. One more. Right? Now we're going to turn the head right and left like we're saying no. Through the right. Front, left, front, right, front, left, front, right, front, left, front, four more, four, three, two, one more, chin to your chest, let it just hang for a minute. We're going to do the same concept with our chin low. Ready? To the right, down, left, down, right shoulder, neutral, left shoulder, neutral, right, neutral, left, neutral. You should feel neck and back. And again, go right, neutral, left, neutral, four, three, two, half. Um, the only thing I haven't really stretched is your face. I, yeah. There you go. You stretched your face. Alright, next comic review. Grab a quick drink, we're going to stand up. So, remember, before you stand up, set yourself, prepare yourself to go, and then you can walk out without stumbling. So I'm 
pushing into the floor, pushing into the floor, and I'm lubricating that hip joint the whole time. Besides, I feel some work here. And out and in and out, relax. So we're going to the other side. So where we started was standing on the leg, right? And we just take swing, swing, and swing, and swing. So my right knee is bent, and I'm not trying to get my leg super far around. I'm just adding a little body weight so I can get that joint going, oh, working. Yes, yes we are. And four, a three, a two, bring that left foot down. Right? All of our weight shifts to the left foot. I'm holding on. And by the way, I'm not leaning. It's just for our balance point. Swivel the knee. Right? So if you put your hand where your leg attaches, right, to your body, you can feel stuff. Right? And that's important stuff to have, I want to say strong and sturdy, right, and flexible all at the same time. And four, three, two, and bring it down. So understanding that we have to have muscle around that hip joint, especially as we age. And we have to have flexibility, right? Main reason, if we would uh, fall on our hip, we would have a little extra padding around that hip. And there's a difference between fat cells and muscle, right? Muscle, you have a cushion. Unfortunately, you know, people are joking about having a little extra weight. Padding, the padding is not fat cells. Padding is muscle. It will actually help absorb the hit on the floor or the chair or whatever. Unfortunately, fat kind of like separates, right? So, prime example, before I forget it, if you have a raw chicken, right, and you push down on the meaty part, it doesn't separate, it just kind of squishes, right? But if you push down on fat, you can actually push down hard enough that the fat separates. So remember that, right? I'm not just feeding me a line, it's a true statement. So we want to pack some muscle around those hips. All right, so here we go. Foot, foot. Yes, I would. Right foot hit. So here we go. Out and out and out. Oops, sorry, I forgot. Take your foot back slightly. And back and front and back and neutral. Side and neutral and side and neutral. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and rest. So when you're thinking about how your body works and how it functions, right? There's reasons why we do everything in this class. I need you to be able to sit and lower your body weight, your center of gravity, right? And it's knowing that leaning forward is going to keep that momentum of you falling. But learning to sit and have that body weight up and feel comfortable in this position will help keep you upright. Now, I'm not gonna say you're not gonna be sore from catching yourself with those fast twitch muscle fibers, but it's a lot better than having skin tears and broken bones and all that, right? Let's just be real with all that. So, again, I'm gonna work side steps because we lose that, side steps and back steps. So if you need to hold on, please do. We're gonna start, uh, ooh, I have to do this backwards. I have to stop and think for a second. Yikes. I know, it's kind of scary. So if you're standing close to the chair, you wanna step forward with your left foot, step to the side, step close. Left foot goes back, 
left, right, close, forward, close, side, back, side, front. Yeah, I'm, I'm ah, I screwed up. I'm gonna turn around because it's just easier. That's that's just it. I want to take my left foot. I want to go forward, side, close. Right foot, back, side, close. So I'm taking my forward step to the left. I'm bringing my right close to it and then stepping to the side and bring my left foot in. Now I'm taking my right foot to the back. I'm sliding my feet towards each other and then I step to the side and step on it. Right foot closes. So go left, brush, right, left. Right, brush, left, brush, or close. Left, brush, right, left closes. Right to the back, brush left, and close right foot again. Forward, side, close. Back, side, close. Forward, side, close. Back, side, and rest. And just to let you know that's a basic box step, waltz, could do foxtrot, could do rumba. So hey, you're learning to dance, you just didn't even know. That's why I was having trouble doing it backwards. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So, understanding that we have to keep doing all these, what you might consider simple activities as we age, because if we don't, first of all, the hard things will go away quicker, and the simple things will go away soon after. So, let's keep it. So, I want to do a step together step. We're going to start with your left foot. I want to go step together, step, touch. Step together, step, touch. And I want to point out that my toes stay forward the whole time. And it's a ball of my foot, not my heel, touching the floor. So I'm going to turn sideways. So I'm going step together, and you notice the ball of my foot touches first. I drop to my heel, and I'm going to the other side. Step, together, step, touch. Step, together, step, touch. Step, together, step, touch. So if I did heels landing first, this is what I'd look like. And it's a jar. And then I'm dropping into that leg and my knees will be angry. But when I step to the side with the ball of my foot, right, go, go the other way. You notice my knee is tracking forward just slightly. You can see my other leg back here, right? So if I step onto it, notice my other knee comes forward and I step down, I step down, I tap. Step down, step down, step down, and tap. Forward, side, together, side, tap. Side, together, side, tap. So if you allow that knee to float forward, it helps. So I'm going from uh, tap, ball flat, ball flat, ball flat, touch, ball flat. So I'm rolling through my feet. That's why we warmed up the ankles earlier, right? And my toes stay forward the whole time. Because if I turn my toe out, I'm doing a forward step, not a side step. Bum, 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 last one. And rest for a sec. So getting where we can do side to the other side tap, aka a vine, right? Or a double side step in aerobics or uh, line dancing. Line dancing is so good for you. It's good for your brain. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go forward and back. So if I start with my right foot, you notice know, I'm holding on, so if you need to hold on, please do so. If I step forward with my right heel to the ball of my foot, 
both my feet step forward and tap. Now we're going to go back with the uh, right and left foot. Toe heel, close your feet, toe heel and tap. Heel toe, flat, heel toe and tap. Toe heel, flat, toe heel, flat. Do it again. Forward and forward, toe heel, flat, toe heel, flat. Heel toe, flat, heel toe, flat, toe heel, flat, toe heel and hold. I'm going to change sides. And yes, I'm being very specific with your feet. So we're going to start with your left leg. So if we do, make sure you can see, heel toe, flat foot, heel toe, touch, toe heel, flat, toe heel, flat. So you can see that I'm rolling through my feet, right? Here we go. Heel toe. Heel toe, tap, toe heel, toe heel, heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, toe heel, forward, heel toe, heel toe, back, toe heel, toe heel, do it again, heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, one more set please, heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, toe heel, how'd you do? Thumbs up, thumbs down, and right. Again, I know it seems very blah, but it's super important. So if there was any point in time that you lose your balance, or you catch yourself landing with a hard foot, did you see what happens? When I step back flat footed, I'm dropping back into my body, which can make me fall. If I shuffle, well, I think that's hard to do. I'm trying to do it wrong. So when I walk, I allow my knees to float forward, right? If you keep your legs kind of straight, you can hear my feet, first of all. And then you can see my ponytail shifting to the side. Right? Allow your knees to go forward. Allow your feet to roll forward and back. Right? Now, again, a really great place to practice, first of all, a hallway that you can hold onto the walls and there's not a bunch of stuff. Right? We don't want the obstacle course. That's not the gist. Right? A clear space where you can hold on so you feel safe. Thinking about toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, or going forward, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. So when I was at the parkway senior living place, we would have a line of chairs so they could hold on the whole nine. So it really works well. A kitchen cabinet uh, countertop, hopefully it's a longer space, right? But even if you get three or four steps in, you can work on heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. So first in top of class, we worked on movement. So we have to have this movement in our legs, first of all. The other important part of your legs that I've not addressed are these things right here. They're called hip flexors. They have a fancy name. Right now we're sticking with hip flexors. So when we age, because of sitting most of our life, unfortunately, can you see the bend, right? So if this is me upright in a good posture, what happens are my hip flexors or our hip flexors get really tight and this happens. So get the right angle here. So this is neutral, this is tight hip flexors. So that means I stay at this angle, and it doesn't feel good to go here, right? It doesn't seem like a big difference. So what happens is, this becomes my step, right? And going forward, I can't really step. Now look at the baby steps, right? Whereas, if I'm upright, 
I should be able to take a stride, take a stride, and not have, oh my gosh, this hurts. So you see the older folks hunched over, and they're walking like this because they can't stretch the front of their bodies. Their back side of their bodies is not strong enough. I don't want you to get to that point. I, want, I don't even want to think about that point, to be quite frank with you, right? So we have to work. We, our bodies were meant to work. I know, holy smokes, Batman. All right, so we're gonna roll back, pick up that leg. Huh. I'm just holding on the back of the shoe. Right hand's giving me a little pressure, and I'm going, I'm not really going down, I'm actually going diagonally forward towards the ground, but it, it's not straight down. Boy, can I feel that stretch today. And we're gonna switch it out. And again, I'm dead, so it's that position. So it's not down and it's not forward. It's that position. Release the hip. And bring it back. Sit up nice and tall. A little rotation, right? Are you moving better, right? You feel like you go, oh, I can get around a little easier. Or if things are like going crack, crack, pop, pop, right? I want you to crack and pop, actually. That tells me things are loosening up. Elbows. So again, you don't have your break on so you're not going to fall. Nice flat back, chin up. Now I'm not looking forward, as in forward. My back is flat. My head is part of my spine, by the way. Abs are in, do your kegel, all that fun stuff, so you're supported. And we're going to rotate and look out on the horizon of the floor. Easy stretch. Other side, easy stretch. Bring it back to the center, roll up, one vertebrae at a time. Right heel out, chest is lifted. Had to move the meat from under my seat, you know. So we're going to go to the outside of that, and hold, and to your bent knee. Do it again. Side. Side. One more each. Side. And side. Switch legs. And again, nice and tall. My knee, unless you have a prosthetic knee, you don't lock them out. Just, that's the rule. Our knees have to last us a lifetime, and most don't. So if we can keep them as long as possible, Kudos, right? Here we go, to the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. And things are easing up, so I'm kind of giving myself a little lean. One more. Woo, there it is. And switch. And come on. Nice job today. 